Did you have any symptoms within your two week wait? What were the first things you did after you found out? Did you have any cravings? How did you know that you were ready for a baby? Do you have a name yet and will you share the name? Are you already feeling the baby? When is the baby due? Where will you give birth? Will your baby have German citizenship? Are you going to stay in Berlin or where are you going to raise your child? Hi there, welcome to my pregnancy Q&A video. I've decided to film this video in English, but I'm gonna put German subtitles so anyone can understand. I'm doing this in English because my first two videos have been in German and so I just wanna mix it up and make sure that everyone who couldn't understand those can now understand this video. Um, as always though, I'm trying to add subtitles to all of my videos from now on. So even if they're in German, I have English subtitles and so on. Anyway, um, welcome to my pregnancy Q&A video. I feel like this is gonna be a very long one. Just to make it a bit easier for you, I actually timestamped every question. So if there are parts of the video that are not as interesting, you can just go in the description box below and click on the question that interests you the most. So you can skip around if you want to. How do you feel? I feel very good, thank you for asking. I'm very happy to be out of the first trimester and the second trimester has been much easier. I don't have any nausea, maybe just a little bit every now and then, but um, it's really pretty much gone. And I just feel like I need to pee all the time and I can't sleep very well, but other than that, I feel very good. Did you have any symptoms within your two week wait? Yes, I actually did, but I wouldn't say that they were super different to PMS. So I don't, I don't really, I didn't really have like a huge suspicion that I was pregnant. Um, my boobs were definitely hurting. They were sore, similar to before I get my period, but they were sore for much longer, meaning usually it stops and then I get my period a couple days later, but this time it just got worse and worse. So as I was like approaching the day where I should be getting my period, they were still hurting and I was like, that's weird. Also, my temperature was quite high. So I started measuring my temperature about a week before I did the pregnancy test, basically in preparation for the next cycle. Um, but then I noticed that my temperature was always hovering around 37, which is quite high. Um, and that's usually what it is when you get pregnant. It like kind of, it doesn't really sink um, two days before you get your period. So that was also some, a sign, but not necessarily a symptom, I would say. What were the first things you did after you found out? I definitely immediately downloaded some apps, basically just to find out like, when is the baby due? What size is the baby at right now? How far along am I even? Like I didn't even know how to count the weeks. So that's something I definitely Googled. I spent basically the entire day on Google. I also made an appointment with my gynecologist and I also started looking for a midwife. That's something if you're in Germany, um, they recommend doing because midwives, especially in Berlin, are quite rare. If you wanna have one that comes to the hospital with you, that is with you for the entire pregnancy, the entire birth, and the entire time after, um, meaning like always on call for you, like one specific midwife, you have to do that as soon as you find out you're pregnant, which is the weirdest thing because I was like, I don't even know how the system works. I don't even know what kind of birth I want, but it's weird to have to start looking for a midwife at that point, but that's the recommendation. Were you nauseous in your first trimester? If so, when was it over? I will post my first trimester vlog next week so you can definitely see a glimpse into the horror that is the first trimester. I never knew it was gonna be that bad, but it was really bad. I gladly didn't throw up, but I was nauseous pretty much from week six onwards, I think, or even week five already. And I think the worst week was seven or eight around that time. I was feeling really bad and super tired. Eating a banana, not, being too hungry at any time of the day. Those were some things that like kind of helped me. Crackers were good. Sometimes I, I had weeks where I didn't want to have any water. It was hard. I had to force myself to drink water. Anyway, I will go into that detail in the first trimester vlog, but it was over, I would say around week 15. We went to see um, our family in the States in New York. And I remember that that week was like, I was like, I'm gonna be so much better that week. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna be out of my first trimester. And I got there and I was so nauseous and I was just, yeah, it was, I, I was so sad that it wasn't over yet. But then as soon as we came back to Germany, the nausea was gone and I was feeling a hundred times better. So I think it was around 15 weeks that that, that switch happened. Did you have any cravings? Um, in the first trimester, honestly, nothing edible. I mean, I didn't crave anything non-edible, <laughs> luckily, that's also a thing apparently. I just didn't want to eat anything. I, I wanted to eat because I was hungry, but nothing really was super interesting to me to the point where I would call it a craving. 
Um, but I did have, every now and then, I, I realized that there are certain foods that I can eat more than others. So I would say that's, I don't know if you consider that a craving. I had a lot of bananas and a lot of cucumbers. I still eat a lot of cucumbers. I also, right now in my second trimester, eat a lot of red bell peppers. Primarily because I know they have a lot of vitamin C, but I also very often before my pregnancy didn't like them as much raw or just generally um, and now I'm eating them so much. They're so refreshing um, For a f for some time I liked orange juice a lot um, right now. I'm not loving it so much I don't need it so much. I didn't really have cravings where I just had something super random in my mind that I needed to have immediately. It's more so that nothing else interests me and then I think of something and I'm like, that's it. Um, but that's over now. I feel like it's better now in the second trimester. How old are you and Scott? Um, how old is Scott? Scott, are you 35? Scott is 34 and I'm 27, about to turn 28 in May. How did you know that you were ready for a baby? Um, I, in some ways, I was always ready for a baby. My friends know that. I've been baby obsessed and just excited about pregnancy and becoming a mom one day for as long as I can remember, honestly. Um, it was just always like waiting for the right moment and I wanted to feel prepared in a certain way. And I don't think I'm financially or like business-wise at a much, much, much better or different place than a couple of years ago. I think um, I always envisioned having like this crazy success, having like a house and a garden for the kid, so everything is perfect and prepared. But then I realized like it doesn't come, like feeling ready doesn't come from what you have and what you possess. Of course, it's good to have a certain base and a certain like financial stability. But for me, it was much more about like internally, like knowing when is the right time that I can give up part of my life and give that to a child and I think Scott and I realized throughout 2022 that we were kind of feeling ready. I remember on New Year's 2022 turning into 2023 Scott and I looked at each other and we were like that's the year we're gonna get pregnant and um, when we we didn't really start trying immediately but when we then met Scott's niece or our niece um, Scott's sister's baby we, we knew that we wanted to try immediately. We just felt so much love for her and we were so excited to one day see how that love feels for our own child. Do you know the gender yet? Um, yes, we do. We actually found out quite early. We found out during the first trimester screening. Uh, well, the doctor found out during the first trimester screening. He wrote it down on a piece of paper. Then we also did the NIPT test um, and that result came back a bit later. So when we were in the States, we um, opened the piece of paper from the doctor and I'm gonna show you the result in the second trimester vlog. It was a very special moment um, and I will go into more detail then. Do you have a name yet and will you share the name? We have a name. We like the name a lot and we are trying to find other names that we also like, but nothing comes close to how much we like the name we already have. So I'm still trying to make a list of like maybe three names and play around with them. How much of the baby and pregnancy are you going to share? Gender, name, face, birth experience, etc. We are going to share a gender, but a little later on. We're not sure about sharing the name. Maybe we share the first name, but not the middle name. I like when people share the names because I think it's very inspiring for moms to be. Also, it makes it so much easier if I happen to mention the baby's name, being able to say the name is much easier and just nicer than being like baby or kid or child or I don't know what else you would say. Um, birth experience, I would definitely share. I don't think I would vlog the birth, but I would talk about it afterwards. And uh, face, I wouldn't share the face um, straight up. I would maybe try to like show the baby from behind or I don't know. I, I don't know yet. I think it totally depends on how I feel when we get there, but privacy is very important to me. And obviously the baby doesn't choose to be on the internet. I choose to be on the internet. And so just as much as Scott is not a main entertainment in my videos, the baby will also not be a main character in my videos, I think, but also, my opinion could change. And I hope that you respect um, my opinion as well. I think this is a very heated topic and I don't want to start any discussions on this. How do you deal with body changes? This is actually tougher than I thought. I am obviously in awe with what's happening and the baby that's growing inside of me, but 
as someone who has never dealt with fluctuations in weight it's kind of weird to see your body go through this and like suddenly the pants are so tight also around the hips not just the belly and um, everything just changes a bit my skin also tends to have stretch marks like in puberty um, I got stretch marks and um, I just know that or I think it might happen again and so that makes me a little bit nervous which isn't nice obviously the focus should just be on the baby and our health but of course you're also just worried that like you're gonna change so much it's gonna be hard to to come to terms with your new body I, I talked to a friend the other day and we both agreed that this is something we don't hear very often on the internet people are always like I'm just amazed at what my body can do and that is so true but it can also be true at the same time as being scared or being anxious about your body changing that is so normal and should be talked about too um anyway i feel fine but obviously there are some thoughts where i'm like i don't know how can i support my body i don't know it's just weird when you've never gone through a change like this are you already feeling the baby yes and it's the sweetest thing ever it's honestly um Sometimes I'm like when I don't feel the baby for a couple hours. I'm like, hello, are you in there? <laughs> and then I get a kick and it's like it's just the nicest thing It's like almost a way to communicate and it makes the pregnancy so much more real. Does Ellie know that you're pregnant? I don't know. She definitely sticks around, but she's generally a very attached dog She follows us into every room we go into and she's just very like loving she's not a cuddly dog and she doesn't she hasn't changed that behavior at all so i wouldn't say she's like attached to my belly or anything like that um so it's really hard to tell but we had some moments where she like sniffed my belly and then like wagged her tail and we were like oh my god she knows but that happened like once or twice when we pointed out the belly and maybe she was just looking for a treat so who knows when is the baby due we are not going to share the exact due date, but the baby is due in August, so um, summer baby. Do you want to give birth at home or in a kibbutz house or in a hospital? Um, kibbutz house, if you don't know, as far as I know, is like um, it's not a hospital, but it's like a place where you can give birth, which is like usually run by midwives. Um, we are, have been thinking a lot about this. Home birth was never really on. Uh, as an option for us, but we were thinking about kibbutz house for a minute because it's my first birth um, I would rather give birth in a hospital to be honest, but I have a Beleke Bama, which is a midwife who is there just for me for the entire birth uh, I already know, know her. I already have appointments with her and um, She's gonna just make sure that my birth is the way that I want it to be and it's gonna feel really reassuring to have someone there who I can trust and who I know and so that's our choice for the birth. Okay, I just had to change the SD card. It was already getting quite long. Will you have a doula? I won't have a doula, I will have a midwife. How do you prepare for birth mentally and physically? Are you scared? I wouldn't say I'm scared. I'm actually very interested to, to um, experience it. I used to watch a lot of birth vlogs before I was pregnant. When I got pregnant, I decided not to because I was like, I don't want to get scared. But then yesterday I was kind of like interested to research more about the topic. I think it's also good to prepare yourself to know what you can expect both positively and negatively. And so I watched some birth vlogs that were labeled like positive. So I would get like kind of a positive view. I'm also preparing myself a lot for birth already, mainly through exercise. I do um, prenatal yoga at Oya Berlin, which is a very great place. I love the teacher there. And I'm also doing some exercises with a Pilates like pelvic floor specialist um, and I'm trying to kind of keep that going until birth. I see a lot of like very heavily pregnant mamas at the birthing at the prenatal yoga classes and it really motivates me to keep going as well and really do it until I give birth. And I love prenatal yoga because you really notice like how the exercises are meant to help you with birth in terms of like how you move your body but also mentally there is one exercise that is part of kundalini yoga where you're supposed to like put your arms aside and circle them for three minutes and you go through this um state of i don't know like it's very hard and painful on your shoulders and you kind of like um, mentally think you can't do it and you overcome that and she teach she taught us that like a contraction is never as long as that really and so knowing that you can 
relax after and that it will be over at some point and also understanding like how long three minutes are um in a way like mentally can like really prepare you as well so i don't know if that's uh, the case i haven't given birth but it's uh it truly doesn't hurt and i feel like it's ma making me very um i feel like it's strengthening my my self-esteem or belief like believing in myself and then i also go to therapy it's not really birth preparation necessarily but talking about how i feel if i have any anxieties is also very useful and helpful so if you're pregnant i think therapy can also be a very good tool to use i'm also reading some books i bought um artgerecht it's a german book and i don't think i have any other birthing books yet but i will definitely buy some because i think it's very um, important as well I also want to do some more meditations. I've been really neglect neglecting that. Um, I know that yoga is technically also, I feel like it's also very meditative, but I want to start meditating daily because I think it's really important to be able to, to do that and like calm yourself in that way. And I've meditated a lot in the past and I know how impactful and positive it can be, but I've kind of not felt very motivated lately or I also don't really have a place and time when I like to do it. We're about to go on a very long kind of holiday. It's not really a holiday, but it's like a nice trip. And I'm going to try to use that to really integrate that into my daily habits. Where will you give birth? I will give birth in Berlin. Will your baby have German citizenship? No, the baby will have Austrian and American citizenship. Are you going to stay in Berlin or where are you going to raise your child? Um, big question, honestly, as always, we are, we talked about this a lot and it's actually the second question, the second most asked question we get from family and friends as well. Um, the plan is to stay in Berlin for probably another two years, so we're going to give birth in Berlin and we're going to have like our first kind of one, one or two years of having a baby in Berlin. Um, just because we don't want to change everything all at once, also some of my friends here are pregnant, we have a really good friend group here and just feel very settled and happy and we also don't want to move while i'm pregnant or in the first couple of years of course it's hard to be away from family and i think if i was close to my mom uh, living close to my mom she would be helping a lot and always there for me and I, knowing that i don't have that is very sad um but i know that we can always go back if it's too hard where we go after we don't know if maybe we stay in berlin for even longer Maybe we go to the States, which would be something that might make sense like for Scott, Scott's job. Um, maybe we go to Austria somewhere in the mountains because we want to be in nature. Maybe we go to Vienna. Maybe we go to where my mom lives to be close to family. We have no idea. Anything is possible. Will your chaos room become the baby room? We still don't know. We have a bit of an issue. We have a really nice apartment and a really good size, but the issue is that we only really have, apart from living room and bedroom, we only really have one more room that could be a baby room, but it's currently our office and guest room. And guest room, we don't necessarily need, but an office is quite important. We both work from home and I have a lot of like slow label samples lying around. So currently that is like, meant to stay the office and we are going to put the baby in our room the changing table and like probably a, a small bed next to our bed um what we're gonna do long term we don't know we might switch the office to be a kid's room and put the office stuff in a totally separate place we don't really know are you planning on raising your kid bilingually yes we are um because i'm austrian i'm going to speak german to the baby and scott's going to speak english to the baby i'm a little bit scared of it because i don't really trust myself in handling this huge responsibility well enough um, i feel like i don't have a lot of moments in my life where i speak german or am surrounded by german language most of my friends are english speaking scott is english speaking we watch English shows, I read English books. So um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I need a lot of German kids books to be able to really teach our baby um, all the different words that may not be natural or may not be everyday life for me, you know? But also this is the reason why we might, um, if we choose to have our baby in a kita, in a, you know, childcare, we would probably choose a German speaking one rather than an international one because the international side of the, 
the baby will be nurtured probably a lot more than the German side or Austrian side. Whew, what are your plans with the slow label when you are in baby bubble? Um, yeah, big question. Honestly, a lot of things that happened last year with the slow label were partially due to us trying to conceive and me burning out throughout the process. Um, I have a whole video about last year and my mental health last year. If you're interested in watching that, I will link it below. Um, but anyway, slow label this year, my plan originally was to find a business partner, um, mainly because the business is doing really well, but I don't feel like I have the yeah, broad enough skill set to grow it really well or to manage it as efficiently as possible. I'm very efficient and fast and I can do a lot of things, which I am doing a lot of things for the slow label at the moment. But once I give birth, I don't know how efficient I'm going to be. So at the moment, um, it's kind of, I'm still looking for a business partner, but I'm almost wondering if it's better to just hire um, two more people for now that can then also replace some of the things that I do on a daily basis to make more room for myself to um, work less when the baby comes. Um, so actually I have one job posting that I'm going to publish when this video goes live so you can look at it. I'm going to link it below in the description. It's for someone who can manage our customer service requests and some stuff like that. So I will link it below if you're interested. But yeah, um, we are planning on launching some things in September, which will be a bit of a challenge, but that will be one project I will try to prepare as much as possible before birth um, so that I can really like launch it with as, a little, as little stress as possible. Then we don't really have another production planned until next spring, summer, meaning like we have some products launching fall, winter, and then I'm kind of giving myself a break. And I think next spring, summer, we're gonna mainly restock items maybe launch a couple new styles but not a huge collection just so i don't have so much to work on in the first months of having a baby will you take maternity leave um another big question it hurts like hell <laughs> i wanted to i really wanted to take like a year off or half a year off i always thought yes we live in germany everyone says it's the best country it's like so great for maternity leave and you can stay home with your kid and get paid of course, I don't want to complain. Compared to America, it's a million times better. However, if you're self-employed and if you have one or two businesses and if your husband is also self-employed, it's not as easy. It's really, really not. It's actually super complicated. And the chances that you have to pay back money that they pay you during your leave because something wasn't calculated correctly are very high. Um, that being said, there's also the chance or the, the risk of your business just not doing well while you're gone. I There's no support for self-employed people, meaning like if you have a business that has ongoing expenses and you're gone because you're on leave, those expenses don't just disappear, you know? There are certain things that just regularly need to get paid and if there's not much money coming in because you are gone, it's not good for the business. So obviously, my baby comes first, but um, I can't just not do anything for both my businesses. Financially speaking as well, um, I wouldn't probably, it wouldn't be enough to just get the money from the government. Um, I don't know. Those are all things that I've been kind of talking about with my tax accountants and they both have advised me to not take maternity leave and not take any money from the government. Basically continue to work. Um, and that's pretty shitty. I totally understand where they're coming from though, because I totally understand that it's not very easy in my situation. This is a very long answer. Long story short, I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly. I know that I'm probably going to not take any money and any official leave, but I'm going to probably um, not work for one or two months um, and try to save up as much money as possible, have some people helping in the background, um, and probably not gonna post anything on YouTube for a little bit. And then when I do come back, um, I'm going to try to just work less hours and work more efficiently. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be easy. If anyone's watching this who is self-employed or maybe any influencers even, or any business owners who have a business that like can't really sustain itself without them, 
what did you do or what do you do what are you are you going to do if you are in the same situation i would love to connect because this is something that i'm trying to get answers on what do your eating habits look like are you still vegan this is a question i've answered many times before but i'm not fully vegan i was vegan a couple years ago and then i started eating honey and eggs again and i feel very good with that my eating habits at the moment i eat very healthy i eat very colorful I love vegetables and I love having a vegetable as the main of my meal. I don't need like any fake meats, but it's nice to have sometimes. Um, it has definitely changed in the sense that I try to not be as vegan or vegetarian as I am, simply because doctors made me scared of all the things that my baby or I might be missing out on. Um, so when I got pregnant, my gynecologist, both the one in Austria and in Germany, and I think someone else, maybe even my midwife, I don't remember, they basically said to me like, you know, up until now it was fine to be vegan, but vegan and pregnant is really hard, even if you eat eggs. And they basically said I should start eating cheese, which after seven or eight years of having no cheese is the weirdest thing ever. So I tried it. I tried, I think, two different cheeses and I tried a slice of pizza and I don't like it. <laughs> It's like, as much as I want to give my baby or my body calcium, I almost want it rather from a different source, just because I don't like the idea of what cheese is and so on. So I don't know, my eating habits are pretty much the same as before, even though, like I said, I tried eating cheese. I tried eating fish too, especially during our fertility journey. This was something that people scared me with as well. Like, oh, you're just missing these nutrients and you need to eat fish and it's so healthy and I tried it but I never even had fish before I turned vegan so for me that was like a huge step and when I say I tried it I mean like a bite <laughs> every now and then when Scott had a fish but um didn't really enjoy it either so I, I don't know I'm happy to film a what I eat in a day video for you um, but I don't want to inspire anyone to follow a vegan diet when you're pregnant. I don't know if it's the best thing to do. I don't know if it's the worst thing to do. I think people stress too much about that stuff. Um, of course, nutrition is important, but if you're someone who eats very healthy generally and just eats enough generally, then I think um, there shouldn't be such a huge emphasis on this, especially if you're testing your blood levels. Um, my blood has been great vitamin b12 is great the only thing that i've never struggled with but i'm struggling with now struggling i say it's not as bad almost every pregnant woman experiences this is iron so i never had any iron issues before and now with pregnancy because you have so much more blood in your body and it's so diluted you have low blood uh, low iron levels in your blood so that's something i'm trying to supplement now what was the first thing you bought for your baby um when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't want to buy anything because I was still in the first trimester. However, it was around Christmas time and all of the brands, all of the baby brands um, started having sales. And I also got targeted with ads like crazy. I still do. I get like so, so many baby ads on Instagram. I, I kid you not, like the algorithm is so scary. And it's honestly the first thing I noticed when I got pregnant that just by googling things and liking certain things where there were baby or pregnancy topics related i got so much of that content played out to me or displayed to me especially tiktok was scary like i would get tiktoks that were actually talking about the week of pregnancy that i was in or the month of pregnancy i was in it was like um, this is how I deal with nausea at 16 uh, or at 14 weeks pregnant or something, you know, like it would be so specific that it was actually scary. Um, anyway, I have never been the type of person to click on an ad until now. I click on almost every baby ad, which is probably why I'm getting so many. Um, but it's also interesting for me to kind of research what's out there. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling on. I bought something from Leewood. Um, it's a brand that I knew before I was pregnant and I got their ad for their winter sale and I bought something for the baby and it was basically just like these two onesies and a little winter outfit and then a little lamp and my mom was like, Anna, you're seven weeks pregnant, you don't need to buy these things now. So yeah, anyway, it was very cute to buy it because it was almost, it, it like was almost a treat to myself. Huge question, what will you buy in terms of newborn essentials and any baby things? 
honestly, I've been thinking about this a lot. I actually had a call with my midwife yesterday about this topic where she talked me through her newborn essential list um, for two hours. <laughs> we talked all about that topic and it was so interested, interesting and I learned a lot. I have a list. Um, I'm happy to, to like do a video about this, but it's almost weird to do it before you have a baby because I don't know if these things are actually good, if I can actually recommend them to you, but maybe I will integrate it in a vlog, kind of showing you what I've got and why and yeah, just mentioning that I don't know if it's actually gonna be useful. But um, one thing that I've definitely heard everyone say and rave about are wool silk onesies and the onesies that are wraparounds that are not um, put on over the head, those kinds of things in terms of outfits. Also, nothing too small or too big. Apparently size 56 is a good one to start with, this kind of stuff. I think it would definitely make this video too long if I went into more detail, but um, yeah, it's definitely a topic right now and I'm happy to share more. <laughs> What are your pregnancy outfit must-haves at the moment? It's actually been really hard to, to get dressed in the morning for me. I'm happy to share more of my outfits on TikTok and Instagram. I currently love anything with an elastic waist. Jeans are a bit too tight for me now. So I'm wearing a lot of like, um, we're coming up with pants for the slow label soon that have an elastic waist and I wear them under the belly um, or over the belly, but I prefer them under the belly. Um, and those are great. I just get them in a size bigger than what I'm usually and you can tie them with a drawstring and That fits me really well. I also love dresses anything that like accentuates the belly But I also love oversized where it doesn't really show the belly so much um, T-shirts and tops I feel like still fit me quite well. I love the everyday tank from the slow label because it's nice and stretchy um, and I also just bought some uh, nursing bras because my boobs have expanded to quite a huge size um, so none of my bras fit me anymore really and so I bought one from boob design and it's really good it's like a kind of like a wrap um, bralette okay and now I'm going to answer some questions on the topic of fertility I didn't want to leave those out um, even though they're not usually part of these kinds of pregnancy Q&A's um, but I think it's important especially because I filmed a whole video about our fertility journey our trying to conceive journey if you haven't watched that yet I have it online with some English subtitles you can watch it by clicking the um, icon in the top corner or going in the description box before getting pregnant were you on any hormonal contraceptives no I came off the pill when I was 20 um, I had I, I was taking it for my acne and when I was 20 I stopped taking it and we started trying when I was like 26 ish so it had been like five six years um, after coming off the pill that we started trying how many months did it take you to fall pregnant it took us eight months um, more or less I think it was around eight months we definitely weren't trying but we also weren't being too careful for like three more months so I would say like eight to eleven months of like trying but then eight months of really trying. Which fertility tests did you do? We, I didn't really do any specific tests for me. I mainly went to my gynecologist and had her check if I have any cysts on my ovaries or if anything's abnormal. And um, she never found anything that was abnormal. She also mostly, most of the time always saw like a follicle that was getting ready for ovulation. So it was like, she saw that I was ovulating we timed the appointments in this way as well, where she could kind of like see my egg before it was released. Um, and that was always kind of checking out. So I never really had any issues in that regard. And I'm super, super lucky and happy about that because I know it's much, much more of a struggle if there's something actually um, that they can detect that is wrong with you that you have to treat first. Um, in terms of Scott, we did a Spermiogram in German. I think it's just like a sperm test um, and everything checked out there too. We went to a fertility clinic for him uh, for that one, um, but because everything was okay and we hadn't been trying for over a year, they didn't have us both come in. So it was just him going in. And I don't know if I can recommend them. I think he had a good experience because I got some questions about that. If you wanna know where we went, you can text me on Instagram, but I think any fertility clinic can do these. Which supplements did you take? So I was not super, super, super strict with my supplements, which I should maybe have been a bit more strict. 
I took um, omega threes and I took like a vegan supplement with a bunch of different things that are good for vegans, especially. It also had vitamin B12 in there, but I think what it didn't have in there was vitamin D or maybe not enough. And that's something that later on I was thinking about it. I was like, maybe I should have been a bit more strict with vitamin D. I definitely took folic acid quite religiously. So like, I think I took like 400 milligrams, probably wrong. Anyway, I took folic acid before we try before we got pregnant and that's um, also a main thing that you should be taking before you're getting pregnant when you're trying to conceive eight months into trying to conceive was there anything you changed in the last cycle that helped you conceive this is a hard question because when i was trying to conceive when we were going through this i was desperate for tips and i would have tried anything that anyone would recommend you know what i mean and so i think this question is very powerful because anything I say, if someone's watching this who's been trying for a long time, they think that that is the holy grail and if they try this, it will work. And it's so different for everybody. First of all, obviously you need to get tested if something's potentially wrong, but also, I don't know, it's, it's so hard with these tips because I'm also so, I hate all of these tips that, that when people say like, oh, just relax and it will work, get drunk and it will work, go on holiday and it will work. All of these things like, you just don't want to hear that. It won't make such a huge difference. And these tips are actually kind of just not nice to hear when you're in the process because it implies that you're stressed out and that you're, um, I don't know, unreliable, unhealthy, whatever. Like it doesn't feel good to hear that. So if you're going through this, I'm so sorry. And I hope that, um, you know, I hope that you find your way. I have some things that I did that I can mention, but like I said, take it with a grain of salt. I don't want to gatekeep anything. If something is in, in there that could help you, then hopefully it does but also don't stress yourself out. You don't need to do any or all of these things. I had my gynecologist check my thyroid um, levels because that very often can have an impact on the hormones in your blood. I took the supplements that I just mentioned and I also not always, but sometimes took gut bacteria. I can recommend seed, which I'm currently not taking, but Omnibiotic in Germany is also quite, um, Good. I know that those, both of those brands are, have really good reviews. Mönchspfeffer, monk pepper. That's something I started using in the last cycle, but I started using it after ovulation. So I don't know if it really had an impact. I don't think so. Honestly, don't think so. But I know that this was something that someone recommended to me because my cycle was always like four days longer or shorter. It was kind of, it was regular, but it wasn't as regular as it should be. Apparently that would have helped me. I don't know. If this is the case for you, maybe it helps you. I do acupuncture. I did acupuncture for the entire last year or for a good majority of the time that we were trying to conceive. And if you tell your acupuncturist that you're trying to conceive, they can schedule you in for certain parts of your cycle where they can help with your ovulation, for example. I also went to my gynecologist a couple days before my ovulation and she was able to see the egg and she was able to tell me when she thinks my ovulation might happen. And then I also used ovulation test strips to check my LH levels and see when I would ovulate and we would time it that way. I also used the app Clue to track my cycle. I've been doing that for many years and that was also a way to kind of see when my ovulation could be. It's always hard to know exactly, but that's like, it, it helped us kind of understand the time frame of when I'm fertile. I think those are all my tips. Did you share with your family that you were trying to conceive? Yes, we did. We didn't at first. Um, we shared it with some friends. Um, the main reason why I didn't share it with my mom, for example, for the longest time was because I always hoped that I would be able to tell her that I'm pregnant. Um, so I always kind of kept it hidden from her, wanting to just, you know, wanting to just believe that maybe I'll get pregnant this cycle. And then instead of telling her, hey, we're trying to conceive and kind of taking her with me on that kind of not so good journey or you know, sometimes not very happy journey. I wanted to just come with her, come to her with the end result and surprise her and be like, I'm pregnant. I ended up telling her, I think one cycle before I got pregnant um, because she talked about babies a lot and I wanted to just like tell her. And then also Scott's parents ended up finding out when we were there in October. And yeah, I don't know if I would recommend telling friends and family. I think it totally depends on what you want and how you feel. And if you do tell them and you don't want any tips or you don't want any of this like just get drunk and it will work advice then just tell them like i think it's important to voice 
what you want and what you don't want out of it. Like if, if this is something that stresses you, then just like tell them, hey, I want to tell you because it feels good to share it, but I don't want you to tell me what to do. I, I don't need that, you know? And if you do need it, then, then do it, you know? If you have like specific questions for someone and you would like to share it, then do it. Um, I think it's just really important to put up boundaries in this time because it's not an easy time. Okay, I think those are all the questions. I'm tired, <laughs> I'm sweating, <laughs> I need a glass of water. Uh, I'm gonna go and edit this video now so that it can go live this week. Thank you for watching, watching? Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any other questions that I didn't answer, please um, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to get to them, I'm happy to answer them right there. Um, also, please, as always, be respectful when it comes to mom topics and all of these opinions. It's a very heated discussion and we can sometimes, I think, forget that the people reading these comments, be it me or other people, other expecting moms, whatever, you know, we're in a very vulnerable state right now and maybe not in the best um, in the best state to be to be arguing about topics so if there's something that you would do differently something that you know i said that you didn't agree with you can say it in a very nice way up until now everybody has been very nice but yeah anyway just um be mindful of that and uh i hope i see you next week again for a very exciting first trimester vlog if you want to see me going through hell uh come back on sunday <laughs> anyway um thanks for watching and see you next week bye by the way this happened yesterday because we went to a scan and they took my blood and I, it's never happened to me before. I totally bruised. <laughs> so if you can see this in the video, I'm sorry.